Good morning everybody and welcome to Third Beard Fishing. I'm Solomon and then today we are down at Melbourne Beach, Florida to do a little bit of surf fishing. Hopefully we're going to do some pretty good. Uh, the conditions are phenomenal. The water is for the most part pretty flat. We've got waves at around one foot, maybe almost two foot, but I mean it's, it's pretty glassy. The water quality is fairly clear, uh, whereas the past couple of weeks it's been absolutely atrocious brown chocolate milk looking. And uh, there's, um, there's no seagrass, I see none. And uh, last night there were tons of sea turtles coming up and nesting on the beach. You'll see footage of that in a little while. Uh, not of the sea turtles, but of their nests and stuff. So uh, I think it's gonna be a good day. I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get fishing. Before we begin this awesome video, I want to show you guys something. My views are mostly from non-subscribers, about 86%. So if you guys are watching this and you are not subscribed, please take the time to subscribe. It really helps out the channel and I greatly appreciate your subscription. Now back to this awesome video. So these are sea turtle tracks that go up the beach. Unfortunately this sea turtle didn't go end up going anywhere but if we go up here there's a number of tracks such as this one that come from the surf they lead all the way up to the mangroves you see that loose wet uh, sand up there that is a sea turtle nest. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, probably twelve or thirteen of them that I see down there. That's really cool. So many sea turtles came out last night, and there's more down that way. Tons of them. Alright, I definitely got a little bit of a bite here on this one. We're going to call this the little rod. Yeah, let me reel this one in. There might be a little fish on here. It could be a catfish or something. Oh, whoops. Forgot my drag was loose. Oh, what the heck? There we go. I don't feel a fish on here though. What? Eh. Could be. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Oh, I felt the I feel bumps now. I don't know what those bumps were, but that felt fishy. I think we got a fish, we got a fish, woo, we got a fish. And it's a whiting, yay, it's not a catfish. It is not a catfish. All right, folks, after nine days of trying to catch something other than a catfish, we got a whiting here at Melbourne Beach. So real excited. This guy's actually gonna be bait on the shark rod. So I'm gonna get him on the rod and uh, we're gonna go from there. Yeah, yeah. Woo, this feels heavy. I think. Oh, now it doesn't. <laughs> oh, now it does. Oh, we got. Gotta be careful, that blue heron's right there. 
Still on? Yeah, it's still on. There we go. <gasps> it's a shark! It's a shark! Hold on, I gotta wash him off. Go on! Stupid thing. It's a little black tip. Sweet! There we go. First shark of the day. <laughs> it's not quite the size shark we were hoping for, but I mean, I will take it. Here, buddy. Still don't want to get bit. Boy, that is in there. Stand by. We're going to have to go get the... Uh, uh, D-hooker here. I know, buddy. I'm sorry. I left it up here. I didn't think this was a shark. Suckers in the jaw. Alright, so what we're not going to do, because I'm going to break his jaw and I don't want to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this hook with my bolt cutters. That's what these are for. And this hook will rust out in a couple of days. Come on, break. Come on. Hi guys little black tip shark this little uh, hook will actually rust out in a couple days got to get him back in the water really quickly all right buddy i'm gonna get you back in the water away from mr heron and boom there you go and there he goes he kicked off Woo! oh go away gosh i hate you stupid bird all right, first shark of the day, woo! All right, folks, so I just, hold on. All right, folks, so I just reeled in my shark rod, change out baits, had this piece of stingray on it again, and I did get bit again, <laughs> but it was by a little tiny shark, and you can see the tiniest little bite mark there there's a jaw and then there's some teeth marks down here and then there's a little chunk coming out there so that little shark was about that big and on this big rod there was no way i was gonna feel that or see that <laughs> little baby shark oh my gosh so cute uh but i might change out and put some little stingray chunks on some smaller rods we'll see what happens <laughs> that's adorable Okay, uh, we might have something on here. Oh. Yep. Oh, come on. It broke. That was a shark. That had to be a shark. How did it break? I know why it broke. Oh, man. That's what happens when you don't have mono leader on, folks. So all I had, that must have been a big shark. Oh, that had to have been a big shark. That was just a chunk of mullet too. So the issue with that was I had just the wire leader with no mono leader attached. So what the mono leader does is it, it allows some, some some um, expansion and it also allows that leader to rub on the back of the shark as it's pulling instead of rubbing on this and that's what just happened i just lost a big shark oh i'm broken hearted but that's my own fault i did it myself all right so here's what i was talking about so here is the wire leader to the shark hook okay that's what was on the other rod. And I was fishing more for bluefish because bluefish have really big teeth and they will cut right through your, your uh, 
your mono leader. So I usually fish in the ocean with wire leader. But because I did not have what is called mono leader, which is this, which you can see this one's, this one goes kind of far up here. This is what makes it kind of spongy, gives it a little bit of uh, uh, bouncing action, springing action when the shark actually hits. Uh, and it also allows that to rub the shark's back because their skin is extremely, extremely abrasive. And uh, because I didn't have that, that's why I just lost that animal. So that's a bummer. And he was, he was a good size one too. I could feel it. And that's the second time that that has actually happened that I have lost an animal like that on one of those rods because I was not actually targeting them on those rods and of course those are the ones that bite on those rods not the one i'm after so we're going to try again with some chunks and mullet that's what we just bit got bit on so anyway we'll see what happens dang it It is 4 o'clock p.m. now, and I have been here since 7.30 this morning. I've only caught uh, two fish, and uh, that was a whiting and the black tip shark, and then I, obviously I lost that big shark, which is really unfortunate. Got some weather uh, that's moving, moving up the coast, but I am hearing some thunder, which is not something I really want to be around when I've got lightning rods out sitting up in the pole holders. Um, so I think I'm gonna slowly start packing up. It's been a brutal day of fishing, but at least we did catch something. I'm unfortunate that uh, I missed that big shark, so really bummed. Fishing has just been terrible for the past two weeks, and I don't know what's going on. I have gone through so much bait today, it's ridiculous. But it's all right, we'll, we'll catch some fish eventually. Just gotta keep trying. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys on the water. Take care. Hello everyone. If you could, I'd love for you guys to check out my father-in-law's YouTube channel. It's a YouTube channel that I also edit videos for called Bearded Lumber. They are a full service sawmill and kiln channel and they are an amazing channel. I hope you guys will check them out. The link is in the description of this video. So check them out. You'll really, really enjoy this YouTube channel. Thank you. Thanks for watching the third beard channel. Here's a video selection, and here's a playlist suggestion. Be sure to subscribe. Thank you.